13.3, how rocks changed. So, so far in the chapter, we have talked about um, what makes up rocks, minerals. Uh, then we talked about in the um, same context, how we can identify those minerals. Uh, then we moved on to igneous rocks, which as we all know, should be remembering igneous rocks are formed from magma or lava that cools and hardens. And then now in the last section, we are talking about how rocks change. So you should have picked up on the fact that we have not talked about the other two types of rocks. So we haven't talked about sedimentary rocks and we have not talked about metamorphic rocks. And that's what we talk about in this section. Uh, those rocks are formed from other rocks. So that's the reason for the title of this section, how rocks change. So sedimentary rocks, just looking at the name sedimentary rocks, sediments. So it should kind of clue you into the fact that these are the rocks that are formed from sediments. So they are formed as sediments become compacted and cemented together, or there's actually another way they can form. We don't talk about it often, you know, in eighth grade science, we're not going to get into this too much. There is another way where we have mineral solutions, which means there's going to be a large body of water that contains minerals. The water evapor evaporates, and then what you are left with behind is actually a mineral, and you see that a lot with salt. Uh, remember we said salt is actually halite, so that will happen. But that is also classified as a sedimentary rock. So the thing about sedimentary rocks, just based on how they form, the fact that they're forming from sediments being compacted and cemented together, they've got to form near Earth's surface. They have to, right? This process is not going to happen deep within the Earth. So sedimentary rocks form at or near the Earth's surface. So you can see just from the picture here, um, some of the different vocab terms that we may not have talked about yet, weathering and erosion. We have um, transport of these sediments by wind, water, and ice. And really that's how sedimentary rocks are forming. You're just getting sediments. They're moving usually by water or wind. They get deposited somewhere. Um, and then they get compacted and cemented together over a long period of time. Sedimentary rocks um, are the most common type of rock found on Earth's surface just because of essentially how they form. Beautiful picture here. Look at those beautiful sedimentary um, rock layers though there when we look at sedimentary rocks and we see layers like that the geologists call those strata so that is a, a stratification process in geology here's just another picture just kind of showing us what happens over time those sediments um, settle and then they just get compacted and cemented together so that it's, it settles the water and the air eventually squeeze out and then those particles get cemented or glued together over a very long period of time and we are not talking about a hundred years we're not talking about a thousand this is a, a process that takes a really really long period of time when we classify sedimentary rocks we actually identify them by the size of their particles so you can see on this little table here um, we would classify it as a mudstone if its particle size is between um, 0 0.002 and 0 0.05. Uh, sandstone, 0 0.05 to 2. Sandstone's a really cool rock. Um, when you look at it, it does actually look like someone took sand, put some Elmer's glue in it, and glued it together. That's really all sandstone is. Uh, conglomerate, obviously you're going to see the biggest particles in a conglomerate sedimentary rock. So here's just some pictures of sedimentary rock. So you'll notice some of them, yeah, you can see the sediments in there. There's sandstone, and this, this piece of sandstone on the slide is a little bit red. You gotta realize, think about how we have so many different types of sand on Earth. We know that we can go places that have red sand if they contain iron. We can go to white sand beaches. You guys can go to brown sand beaches. So depending upon the different type of sand that's forming, you're gonna get different types of rock. Um, shale is a rock that is formed from mud over time. Same thing with mud. We can get all these different colors of mud. Red mud, gray mud, whatever. Same thing again. You, your shale can get different colors just based on what uh, type of mud it was formed from. Rock salt is obviously halite or the salt that's been um, absorbed um, or evaporated essentially. Conglomerate, remember that's the one we just said has, has a larger particle size. Look at that. Look at those big particle size that you see there. Uh, limestone is a very uh, well-known sedimentary rock often found from or formed from organisms that died a long time ago. So limestone is a great place that you will often see fossils inside of them. So those are all sedimentary rocks. So they're formed from sediments that have been compacted and cemented together over millions of years. And depending upon um, what the particles are that formed them and their particle size, you can see we get different types of sedimentary rocks. 
Uh, most fossils are actually found in sedimentary rocks, and when you think about the process by which how sedimentary rocks form, you can see why. You have these sediments that get compacted and cemented together. Let's say an animal dies, like you can see in the picture here, and really all that happens, it just gets trapped in that mud, it gets trapped in that sand. You can see why it turns into a fossil. This process isn't going to happen with the other two types of rocks. If it's an igneous rock, it's going to melt the fossil, right? Um, so sedimentary rocks are really important to us. Without sedimentary rocks, we really would have not a lot of our really great ideas about what life was like on Earth thousands and millions of years ago without sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rocks. That word should look a little bit familiar to you guys uh, in seventh grade when you guys learn about uh, metamorphosis and how insects go through metamorphosis. What do they do? They change form, right? That's what the word means, metamorphic, change form. So these are rocks that change form, and they change form um, by a few different ways. Uh, maybe they get heated up, and when we say heated, we just mean heated. We don't mean melted, because if we mean melted, now we're going into igneous rock territory. So form from changes in temperature and also changes in pressure. So think about squeezing, so really, really great vast amounts of pressure. And also uh, metamorphic rocks can, can be formed when hot watery liquids um, get essentially injected into nearby surrounding rock. So one of the terms that we use for metamorphic rocks is called contact metamorphism. So you can see in the picture here, looks a little cartoon-like obviously, but really all it's just showing you is, is if you do have magma in a location surrounding that magma, it can cook the rock. So what you'll often see is, is you can see sort of like um, an inner portion of igneous rock and then surrounding that igneous rock on the outside of it, you're gonna have metamorphic rock because it wasn't hot enough to melt it, but it was hot enough um, to cook it and it will turn that metamorphic rock uh, or it will cook that rock on the outside to, to turn into metamorphic rock. So all metamorphism means, it just means to change the form of something. So metamorphic rock is really a rock that's formed from another kind of rock due to heat and pressure. That's all it is. It's a rock that has changed form because of heat and pressure. Uh, limestone, like we just showed you earlier, is that rock that um, is formed from shells often. It was a sedimentary rock, right? When limestone undergoes what we call metamorphism, it will turn into marble. We should be familiar with marble. Think of marble statues. Um, so during contact metamorphism, limestone becomes marble under heat and pressure. It's kind of like baking a cake. You know, you're, you're turning one thing into something else. Uh, the book talks a little bit about um, the different types of metamorphism. So high-grade metamorphism involves high pressure. Um, and either low or high temperatures. In this process, the minerals in a rock change to form new minerals. So in high-grade metamorphism, um, you get entirely new minerals that are formed in that new rock. And your book also shows you this little table here, just kind of goes through the different types of metamorphism. So if you have high pressure, um, high temperature, obviously you're going to have contact metamorphism or high-grade metamorphism. So we can get different grades of metamorphism. I mean, really, that's all that you need to kind of pick up from this. It's not just, you know, A or B. That's not how metamorphism goes. You can get different types of metamorphism changing on temperature and pressure amounts. We can also get metamorphism when rocks collide. So think about in the last few chapters, we've been talking about plate tectonics. And let's say we have two tectonic plates crash into each other. That's going to actually create heat. It's going to create pressure. And then you can actually get metamorphic rock forming in that area. So mountains are really great places where we often will find metamorphic rocks because of that process. So here's some examples of metamorphic rocks. So these rocks were all something else in a past life. It's kind of like they undergo a brand new identity. Um, the metamorphic rock quartzite actually used to be quartz. Nice should look a little, little familiar to you. That's the, it's actually pronounced nice, G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. I would say nice has nice layers. Um, nice Looks a little bit like granite, doesn't it? Yeah, because it used to be in its past life. So when granite undergoes pressure and it's squished, all those mineral grains will line up and give you those beautiful layers. Uh, slate used to be shale in its past life. So that was the sedimentary rock that we showed you that is made of mud. So when it just gets further squeezed, further pressure, it's going to even make out more of, um, push out more of those water grains. We're going to get slate. Used to be used in the olden days for um Chalkboards, obviously. Uh, marble, like we just said, used to be limestone. Um, schist is a really cool rock that actually has beautiful layers inside of it. 
um, the rock um, mica is, is found in that. So you just get really cool crystals inside there. So we've talked about all three different types of rocks. We talked about sedimentary, metamorphic, metamorphic, and igneous, and we should have kind of been putting together two and two here that these things are constantly changing. They can be changing into other things, and this process is called the rock cycle. So the rock cycle is the process by which one type of rock changes into another rock. And even though it seems weird to us because we look at a rock and we're like, this does not look like it's changing. When you look at the span of time that Earth has been here, rocks are actually constantly changing. You got to remember when we talked about the geologic time scale, just how short of amount of time we've been here. So rocks are actually always constantly changing. And as we've learned in the chapter, the way a rock form determines the type of rock, rock it is. So if it's sediments, it's sedimentary rock. If it's been melted, it's igneous rock. If it's heat and pressure, it's metamorphic rock. So this is the rock cycle. So every one of these types of rocks can turn into another type of rock just based on what happens. I like this picture a little bit better. It's a little bit cooler to look at. So if you take um, sedimentary rock and you melt it, you're going to turn it into igneous rock. If you take metamorphic rock and you melt it, you're going to turn it into igneous rock. Uh, can you turn igneous rock into igneous rock? Yes, you can. If you melt it, maybe it's going to turn into something else. So this is a cycle, just like any of the other things that we learn about in class. There's not really a beginning. There's not, not an end. It's just letting us know that it's constantly happening and that each one of these things can turn into something else. So if I take an igneous rock and I, I break the particles up of it and it gets compacted and cemented together, I'm making a sedimentary rock. That's all. So these three types of rocks can change into any of the other types of rock just based on what happens to them. I just want to mention a little bit about this. So the mining of minerals, um, this is especially important where we live on the iron range. When we take rocks or minerals and we get them in deposits, such large deposits that we can actually make money off of them, we call them ore. So mineral deposits large enough and pure enough to be mined for profit are called ore. And us living on the iron range, obviously we are aware of the fact that we, uh, we have a large iron ore reserve here, which we do. So it's enough to mine and then make money off of it. There's two different types of mines. There's surface mining and then there's deep uh, pit mining. All the iron mines left in the iron range are surface mines. So that means the remover, removal of minerals at or near the Earth's surface. Uh, the mine up near Tower Sudan, if you guys have ever visited up there, that was a deep mine. So they had to go underground and then bring it up above uh, the surface of the ground. Obviously, a lot of advantages to surface mining uh, because you can just get it right out of the ground. Not so much environmentally, because when you think about surface mining, what you're doing to the ground surface versus you know deep mining, everything's just um, hidden underground that, that you're gonna be doing to the environment. So deep mining, removal of min minerals from deep within Earth. If you guys have never taken that Tower of Sudan uh, tour, it is a great tour. It really is, it kind of makes you appreciate um, what people did to earn money back then. And it is crazy because if you've ever think you've worked hard, I don't know if I would have survived even one day uh, doing what they did back then. So really cool uh, tour, obviously much more dangerous than the, than the surface mining. When mines are done mining, one of the things uh, that got passed in our country quite a few years ago was the Mining Reclamation Act, which states that when mines mine an area, they have got to return the land to either its original state or a usable state. So that's why, especially in our area, we have a lot of um, pits. Well, they will turn them into areas where we can go boating or we can go fishing um, because the, the laws state that as such. So you can imagine that's a really important law. It makes sense because you're taking the land, we took the ore from it, and now we're turning it back into something that people can use for recreation. All right, so hopefully you guys learned a lot in this chapter. And although we don't get to, you know, touch rocks necessarily right now, um, great, you know, lesson. When you guys are outside and you look at rocks, really hopefully you can kind of start appreciating um, really what happened essentially just to make that what you would normally consider a boring rock into what it is.